Uh, the track that we're doing will be the old GAN, uh, which was built by um, camels, essentially, and uh, their handlers. And so, um, yeah, it's a long, long journey. Um, all the places along the way have an amazing camel history, which we'll get into once we see these locations and get to them. And, uh, and for a lot of these kids that we're going to be having on this trek, for where they come from, of course, it's camel culture. So um, there's a link there already. But where they are right now in their situation down there in suburbia, they're, they're so removed from that link. And so this program really is to bring them back to that link as well as uh, benefits that come from um, being on a camel expedition. We're actually going to start from here, right this very location on Beltana Station, which was started up by Sir Thomas Elder um, as the uh, camel um, breeding depot for the inland uh, transportation system back in the 1860s. Ten kids will train five camels and we'll teach them how to do that. Not an easy thing, training wild camels, but done correctly then you'll end up building bond and a trust bond with that animal. But also what they'll be doing is building up bonds between themselves, between uh, ourselves. Yeah, from here we'll be heading north and uh, we're going all the way to Alice Springs. So it's a long trek, sure. Um, the kids will learn a lot, the camels, the new camels will learn a lot, and the two will actually learn a lot together. Well, for a start, it does change your life entirely. You start to work out what's really important and what's not. Um, you start to think, okay, where do you want to go in life? Um, and you start to make plans, because you've got the time out there. So you start to think, well, where do you want to be? And what, what sort of changes do you need to make and how could you make them? Um, you just got the time to be able to do it. And in mainstream society, you know, in our normal daily busy lives, and with everything happening around you, so many influences, um, half the time you haven't got that sort of opportunity to be able to actually think about where you fit in the whole of society. Camel tracking gives you that opportunity. Pretty resilient animal, and uh, the one thing that you know, any camel here, any person actually that takes on, um, you know, such challenges as as uh, expedition tracking, they need to be fairly resilient, or more to the point, they need to learn how to be resilient, and how to just simply say, right, oh, we're living in the moment, we're living now, and. Uh, and we've just got to deal with situations the best way we can to be able to keep going. Well, first of all, what they'll need to do is to be able to listen. All right? Most critical is that you've got to listen. Um, and they'll soon learn, uh, if they don't listen, why they need to listen. Okay, There's reasons for it. Uh, secondly, they need to be able to recognise that there is a spirit being inside these animals and not just some sort of robot and, uh, and that they'll be creating a bond with each one of these animals. Most of the time, believe it or not, camels are actually scared. Right, you wouldn't believe it right now, not with this lovely fellow just giving me a little bit of a nuzzle there. But most of the time they've got that potential to flip into um, a state of almost hysteria. Okay, so our job as cameleers and what we'll be teaching these kids is to remove all senses of fear for these animals, especially the wild ones that they'll be training. With all fear removed, they're going to trust you. So the whole idea is to look after these animals first, number one. The kids will be learning about how to build bonds and friendships and trust. And if they learn these skills with the camels, they can take that back into later life very, very easily. Um, Charlie is actually the leader of the herd. He is the old man. He is uh, sort of like the general, if you like, of the herd. And, uh, and they deeply respect him. We've got Barchi just here, named because when he was being trained, he used to kiss um, his trainer, my wife Roz, um, all the times. Then you got Coco here. I remember Coco. Yeah, 
Cam. Morning, Cam. Here's Coco with his twiddle gear, meaning he's quite comfortable with me being around him. Not a problem. And uh, yeah, he's a good, solid, stable camel. Um, and next we've got over here, we've got Mr. Yuko. He is like the Brad Pitt of the camel land. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous camel. Then uh, behind him you've got Jack. Remember Jack from and the training camp? Yeah, Jack gave me grief for many years um, in training him. And yet uh, all of a sudden he turned. And once he turned, he became a brilliant camel and now he's the leader of the string.